First of all, I really want to thank you for making the distinction about people with mental health issues. We are not contributing to what's going on in the culture. In fact, we are frontline victims of it. The people on the right who are the reactionaries, I don't call them conservatives because they conserve nothing. They don't conserve resources. They don't conserve human life. They don't conserve the planet. They conserve nothing. What we're seeing is the conflation of, or the merger of, religion and corporatism. The poor are still being blamed for their own poverty. Under religion, it was because we weren't right with God or we had bad karma. Underlying all that was we weren't trying hard enough or in the case of karma, uh, we choose to be like this and uh, to work something out from a previous life or some crap like that. But corporations are very good at marketing, and they have learned that they can market this idea of the boogeyman of poverty. Work hard or you're going to be like that. Blame the poor for the siphoning off of tax funds when it's the corporations who are, like you say, are getting the real tax benefits and loopholes. But blame us. Illusionists do it all the time. Any good skeptic who's an illusionist will tell you, you distract the audience with one hand while you're getting your work done with the other hand. And then they go, how'd they do that? It's an old illusionist trick. So now instead of saying God is punishing us or whatever, now it's that we're lazy and we choose this and we don't try hard enough and we're willfully ignorant and foolish. But the bottom line is, the corporations get to do whatever they want and blame us if things aren't going well. And a lot of people will buy it up because they look at us and see us as dirty and disheveled and prone to crime and, you know, they believe all the stereotypes. Meantime, the codification of patriarchy as seen in religion is still growing strong under this new corporate branding. Rape and pillage, you know, Anne Rand kind of philosophy of whatever's good for me, enlightened self-interest, is what's good for the planet, apparently. I never did understand that. So go in, take it by force, take it by guile, take it by manipulation. Complete social Darwinism of survival of the fittest. Not real Darwinism, social Darwinism. And you know, we who have mental health issues, we're the front lines of this because we're the ones that can't get employed, that get evicted, ostracized by family and community, that are suspects by the police. Nothing we have to say is taken seriously by our doctors or medical professionals. And a lot of people who are poor have a lot of trauma. Being poor is living on a knife edge. You're extremely vulnerable. It's very stressful. You never know when they're going to drop the hammer. What's going to happen that's going to contribute to your downfall? Not that being middle class is less stressful, at least not in the United States. I had to go to Walmart yesterday. I didn't want to, but I'm rural and it's the only place that sells some of the stuff that I need without driving like 50 miles round trip to Albuquerque and wasting a buttload of money on gasoline. I was walking down the, I call it the food section in air quotes because it's not really food. It certainly isn't groceries. Most of it's GMO grains with high fructose corn syrup. Well, there's a whole aisle of nothing but frozen pizzas. There were 30 people on the pizza aisle, three people in produce. But produce is so expensive now that I can barely afford anything fresh, and I don't have much storage here anyway. They have these annoying little screens that broadcast commercials inside the store now. I don't know what product it was they were trying to hustle, but it was a woman that looked almost orgasmic taking a bite of this food. And the voiceover said, it's ready in less than a minute so you can get back to work. And I thought, you don't even have time anymore or energy anymore or motivation anymore to prepare a nutritious, wholesome meal. You just gobble something down as fast as you can so you can get back to work. Our wages are stagnant. Prices have gone through the roof for housing and food and just basic necessities. And God help you if you get sick. And whether it's healthy or not, just wolf it down. At least it tastes good. It fills your stomach so you can get back to work. What kind of a life is that? That's complete and total slavery. 
I ended up not buying anything at Walmart and de facto supporting the boycott and I went outside and got in my car and there was one lone guy way out off the property on the roadside holding a sign protesting Walmart. It's a rural community. Even, you know, Albuquerque and stuff, they protesting Walmarts but not out here. And it wasn't until I got home I realized I should have stopped and asked him if he'd like me to hold his sign for a while so he could take a bathroom break or if he wanted me to go get him a cup of coffee or something to eat, you know. I wish I had thought of it. They're finding a philosophy by which they can excuse their behavior under any means necessary and blame the people they're, they're raping. It's typical of abusive people to blame the victim. Pat Robertson, 700 Club. He's up to his ass in Sierra Leone, blood diamonds, gold. Buddies with that corrupt president. Look at the crap that's going on in Uganda. A little test bed, a little human experiment in queer bashing. You know why they're after the queers? Because we're a threat to the Bible, just like evolution is a threat to the Bible or science is a threat to the Bible because the whole house of cards stands on a book of lies. So thank you for noticing that people with mental health issues are not the problem and we don't need to be associated with the problem. I haven't eaten chicken in over two months. Chicken is usually one of the cheapest forms of animal protein I can get. Yesterday at a real grocery store there was a special on chicken for 98 cents a pound. That's two cents less than a dollar. I have budgets for food and like produce cannot be over a dollar a pound, chicken cannot be over a dollar a pound, and it should be closer to three quarters of a dollar, 75 cents. Well here was this big sign saying whole chicken, 89 cents a pound, which is still a little expensive, but that's as cheap as it's going to get. All that chicken was gone. So animal protein is off my list, pretty much, even eggs. And they blame the poor for being fat, but hell, all we can get is cheap filler stuff, ramen noodles and high fructose corn syrup and genetically modified grains and fat, sugar, salt, and carbohydrates. That's all we can get. That's all we can afford. I'm supposed to live on $90 a month food stamps. That's $3 a day. The cheapest hamburger at McDonald's is $1 to give you an example. So my diet's gone to the toilet because I can't afford food. But that's my fault because I'm not trying hard enough. I work harder than anybody else I know. I'm poorer than anybody else I know and I work harder. Even the other people living in this parking lot are not as low income as I am. So yeah, blame us because it's all our fault. Doesn't have anything to do with swiping money from the taxpayers for corporate prisons and military-industrial complex and has nothing to do with that.